Scares and suspense go hand in hand, and learning how to create suspense within our films can help deliver even more impactful scares. I'd highly recommend watching my deep dive on how to create suspense in film. The video link will be in the description below. But the short of it is that creating suspense is all about how you deliver or withhold information from your audience. Learning how to hold the audience in the palm of your hand with the use of information can create suspense and anticipation for the scares to come. Let's look at ways we can build suspense, create unease, mood, and anticipation within our films, and thus create more effective scares. Music and sound, or the absence of either, can go a very long way in helping you lay the groundwork and set the mood for your scares. It can also help when delivering the actual scare itself, with screeching musical cues or wailing operatic moans that can create a sense of dread. And sometimes the absence of music and letting the quiet set in can help deliver an even greater punch when the scare lets itself be known. Try experimenting with sound during your edit to see what fits best and what creates the best sensation of dread and terror. The type of music used in a scene can greatly change the audience's feeling about what they are seeing happen on the screen. Use music and sound to control their emotions the way that you see fit. Another way that we can manipulate our audience is to use camera angles and framing that defies the norm and makes them feel mentally uncomfortable. Tilting our camera to left or right, using extreme close-ups, or using a dolly zoom effect made popular in Jaws will make our audience feel uneasy or confused. Using uncommon angles and shots like this helps sell the idea that the characters in our films are experiencing something out of the ordinary or they themselves are losing touch with reality. Long takes are a great way to lull our audience into a sense of unease or foreboding and then scaring them when they either think that the threat has passed or drag it on for so long they are antsy with anticipation. Scenes like the bike riding scene from The Shining serve to lull the audience into a sense of complacency or mesmerize them, and even put their nerves on edge with this stillness and quietness as our character is followed by the camera. These types of scenes work most effectively when our audience is aware of the danger but aren't quite sure as to where and when the danger will actually come forward. Ambiguity is an aspect of storytelling that I am exceptionally fond of, and using it could go a long way into making our viewers question reality and let their minds wonder as they try to fill in the gaps with their own imagination. Leaving some things unanswered, I think, can make our films more interesting on the whole, as it allows our viewers to question the true meaning of things and to think about our films for much longer after they finished watching them. Ambiguity can help us achieve a scary mood in our films by creating a sense of unknown, and fear of the unknown is very powerful. One of the most primal fears and aspects of life is the unknown of what awaits us in death. Using fear of the unknown to fuel the scares in our films can be a very powerful tool. One of the most important aspects to creating fear and suspense in our films is by either withholding or dispensing information to our audience and characters. It sounds simple, and it is, but what your audience and characters know or don't know can be the key ingredient into making them feel uneasy. Maybe the audience is aware of the monster lurking around the corner, but the characters are not aware. Maybe the characters have seen the face of the killer, but the audience is still left in the dark. Either way, we can wield this information to manipulate the fears of our audience. Now that we've seen ways to build suspense and anticipation, let's look at the specific types of scares often found in horror and thriller films. These scare types can be mixed, matched, and blended together to your dark heart's content to create a myriad of unique scare types. So it really benefits you to mix and match these scare types together to create your own type of Frankenstein's monster. Jump scares are the most common types of scares in horror films, and they can lead into many of the other types of scares that we will feature later on in this list. 
Using musical or audio cues, quick camera cuts, and misdirection can help us to better scare our audience. Jump scares are most effective when they have lulled our audience to either a sense of complacency with a long take, or had them on the edge of their seat awaiting the scare only to fake them out a time or two before actually delivering on that scare or by directing their attention in one direction only to spring the scare from somewhere else entirely. While it's not as sudden and directly impactful as a jump scare, the feeling of no hope or dread can be a scare type that sticks with an audience long after the film is over. Creating a foreboding feeling by the use of music, sounds, or locations can leave a lasting effect, and putting our characters in what feels like a hopeless situation can really mess with the psyche of our audience. The use of a bottleneck situation where the character feels trapped, or a character that is lost in the wilderness, or in a maze of death, are a few examples of a no-hope situation. Oftentimes, it's what we can't see that scares us the most in our horror films. Maybe we heard a strange sound coming from below, and we are searching to find the source. Or maybe we see through the eyes of an unknown killer, but we don't know who or what it is. Only the last victim is aware of the true horror. Leaving the audience in the dark can play on the aspect of information and ambiguity and help build up to another scare, the reveal. When the horror of what we are actually facing is finally revealed, it can make our skin crawl. Whether we slowly reveal the face of a disfigured killer, or we have a masked killer leap at our characters from the shadows using a jump scare, when the horror is finally revealed on screen, the release of tension can be an effective horror creating technique. Body horror is another well-known type of horror scare and it's usually achieved by showing a gratuitous amount of physical violence on screen. These gross-out scares are often associated with films like Hostel or the Saw franchise. Sometimes we don't even have to see the actual gore or violence to be affected by it. Like many of the traps featured in the Saw films, the mere idea of what the various contraptions can do is enough to freak us out. We can also use sound effects to disturb the audience even if the actual violent act is caught off screen. Another great scare tactic is to allow our audience to catch a glimpse of a danger that is unbeknownst to our characters. A shadowy glimpse of a ghost or a waiting killer in the background of the shot while our character goes about their life normally can be a great way to create tension. Another example of the use of information to create scares. A popular way to lead into a jump scare or a reveal scare is to create misdirection with our shots. Much like a magician tricking an audience with sleight of hand, we can lure our audience's attention in a desired direction and spring a scare from an unsuspecting angle, or we can create a false sense of safety by showing a scene that appears mundane, serene and calm, or depicting a feeling of happiness and fun, only to pull the rug out from under them at the last minute, revealing the darkness that waits below the surface. I hope you can use some of the examples featured in this video to create more effective scares in your films. And if you have any other examples that you think I missed, please share them with us in the comments below. I hope you found this video very beneficial, and if you did, please be sure to like this video, share it out on social media, and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos just like this. Thanks for coming along on this filmmaking journey with me. I am Ryan, and I will see you on the next video. Bye bye Do you want me to call Wayne?